Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the 8th video in the STM32 Ethernet series, and today we will see how to use STM32 as a UDP client, using the Netcon API. Here we will periodically send the data from the STM32, which is a UDP client, to the computer, where we will create, a UDP server. Along with that, Whenever the server will send some data to the client, the client will also respond to the server by sending some reply related to the data. We have already covered the UDP server using Netcon in the previous video, and most of the configuration will be similar to that video. So let's start the cube IDE, and create a new project. I am using the STM32F750 discovery board. Give some name to the project, and click finish. Let me clear the pinouts first. If you have watched the previous video, you can skip to 11th minute. We will start with the clock configuration. I have 25 MHz crystal on board, and I am running it as 200 MHz clock. Or right now go to the Ethernet, and enable the type of connection you have. As I mentioned earlier, this board have our MII connection type. Let's start with the parameter configuration first. Since we are using the onboard connector, the PHY address must be zero. Also change the RX mode to the interrupt mode. When you do this, you can see the Ethernet interrupt is enabled. Finally do check the pinouts, and match it with the schematics of your board. Also make sure that the speed is set to maximum. Next go to the free RTOS. I am enabling the version 2 of the CMSYS. No changes are needed to be made in the FreeRTOS. Just leave everything to default. You can see there is a default task created, and later the LWIP will use this task, so leave this too. I am enabling the new library reentrant, as it gives the error while generating the code. Now go to the LWIP. Here first of all we will disable the DHCP, and manually enter the IP address, subnet mask etc. You can see here, the RTOS usage is enabled by default, as we have enabled it already. Anyway, leave everything else to default in the general settings. In the key options, the only change we need to make is, increase the heap memory size. I am setting it to 10 kilobytes. This is it for the LWIP configuration, leave everything else to default for now. Last but not least, since we are using the RTOS, we have to use the time base as anything other than SysTick. I am using the timer 6 for this purpose. Alright? If you are not using Cortex M7 based MCU, go ahead and generate the code. As I mentioned, I am using the F750 discovery board, and as ST recommends, we must enable the instruction and data cache for better processing. Also, this board has less flash memory, and it won't be able to store all the variables in the flash. That is why I am going to use the external flash memory, and for this purpose I must use the MPU. Set the MPU to background region privileged access only, plus MPU will be disabled during hard fault. Now enable the MPU region. The base address will be the address of the external flash, that is the QSPI, which is at 9 million hexa. The size will be 512 megabytes and we will disable all the access in this region. 
As mentioned here in the memory description, the QSPI is in the block 4, which is 512 megabytes. This is why I blocked access to 512 megabytes of memory, so as to prevent the speculative access to this region. If you don't understand this part, watch the MPU configuration series in the Cortex M7 playlist. The link is in the description. The region 2 will start again at the 9 million hexa, and the size will be 16 megabytes. This is the actual size of the QSPI memory available on the board. Here we will permit the access, and we will set the region to cacheable, and bufferable. This was actually explained in my video about the memory configuration in Cortex M7 series MCU. We are trying to set this region as the normal memory region with the right back attribute. This is as according to the ST's recommendation for the QSPI memory configuration. We will create one more memory region at 9 million hexa, but this time we will enable the instruction execution from this region. This is it for the MPU configuration for the external flash. Click save to generate the code. You can see there is the default task getting created. And inside the default task, the LWIP gets initialized. Let's build the code once to check for errors. Alright we have four errors, let's solve them. The first one is about the multiple definitions of Erno. It is defined in the middleware, third party, LWIP, system, OS, sysarch file. Let's open this file first. This must be where the redefinition is causing error. Let's comment out this line, and rebuild the code. We still have some errors, but the error regarding redefinition is gone. Now the issue is related to the flash memory being overflowed. For this reason, we have already set up the MPU, so that we can use the external flash memory to store the data. Let's go to the flash script file to do the modification. We have to change the origin of the flash to the QSPI memory. The address is 9 million hexa, and the size is 16 megabytes. Save the file, and generate the code again and all the errors are gone now. We have modified the flash script but this is not enough. We still need to make some changes in the system file. Go to system init function, and we will add some code here. First we will reset the configuration register, and then we must relocate the vector table to the new flash base. This is all the setup needed for now. We will do the ping test first, and for that we don't need any functions. Let's build the code and debug it. Since I am using external flash, I need to use the external loader in the debugger. So here we will create a new debug configuration. Go to debugger tab, check external loader, and click scan. Now choose the MCU, F750 in my case. Click apply to save the configuration. Now click debug. Download verified successfully, let's reset the controller. Let's put a breakpoint in the error handler to make sure we don't hit it. Let's run the code.
Let's ping to the board. The ping test is successful, and before we go ahead I want to show you the configuration for the Ethernet. This time I have connected the controller directly with the computer, without using any router. This is why I want to show the configuration for the Ethernet in the Windows. Here I have changed the IP assignment to manual. And you can see the rest of the configuration. I will upload these images along with the project, so you can access them later also. Now as the ping is successful, let's include the UDP client library files. Let's see the UDP client source file. We have the UDP client init function, which creates two new threads. The UDP send thread will be used to periodically send the data to the server. And the UDP init thread will be used to initialize the UDP client. The stack size in both will be default, 1 kilobytes, and the priority is normal. Let's see UDP init thread now. First of all we will create a new netcon connection. The netcon UDP argument is used to initialize the UDP connection. If the connection is successful, we will bind the connection to the local IP address, and the port 7. The IP address will be the one we set up in the cube MX, and the port will be the port of the client. Next we will convert the destination IP address to the integral format. This here is the IP address of the computer, which you can find by typing ipconfig in the command window. Make sure you use the IP address of the Ethernet port. Next we will connect to the destination IP and port. This 8 here is the port of the server. After the connection is successful, we will go into the while loop. Here we will wait for the server to send some data. The data sent by the server will be stored in the Rx buff. Rx buff is actually a pointer to the net buff structure that we have defined here. The net buff structure contains the p buff, which contains the actual message, its length, etc. And other things like the address and port of the source. Here we get the message from the net buff, modify that message, and store it in our s message array. Then we call the udp send function, which will send this array to the server. Finally we will delete the net buff, so that it can receive the new data. The next function is the udp send function. It takes the argument as the pointer to the data that you want to send to the server. Here first of all we will allocate a new net buff. Then the net buff refer can be used to copy the data into the payload of the net buff structure. Once the data is copied, we will call the netbuff send, to send the data to the server. Here the connection parameter contains the details like IP address, and port of the server. And the buff parameter contains the data, its length, and the IP and port of the client. After sending the data, we will deallocate the net buff structure. So far the client only sends the response to the server, but we want the client to send the data periodically. And this is why we need the UDP send thread. Here we will send the value of the index variable every 500 milliseconds. This way the client will always send the data to the server, irrespective of whether the server responds or not. Let's write the main function now. Here include the UDP client header file. In the default task, after the LWIP has initialized, call the initialization of the UDP client. This will create the two new threads, and everything will work from there. 
That's all the things we need to do in the main file. Let's build and debug the code. I am going to use the Hercules as the UDP server. This is the address of the client. 7 is the port of the client. And 8 is the port of the server. The address of the server is same as the IP address of the computer. Let's run the code now. You can see the client is sending the value of the index variable. And when the server sends some data, the client modifies it and send it back. In the meantime, it continues sending the index value every 500 milliseconds. So we got the UDP server and UDP clients to work with the netcon. Next I will do the TCP server and TCP client. This is it for the video. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.